Welcome back after the break. Uh, just before we went for our break, we were we uh, read through Second Timothy chapter three, and we just began looking or studying um, verses one to verse five, where uh, Paul is um, reminding Timothy that you know the last days will be perilous times, difficult times, uh, troublesome times. And he talks about the kind of people in these last days. He says there will be men who will, uh, men means men and women, you know, uh, will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, blasphemous, uh, those who are disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, uh, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, uh, without any self-control, those who are brutal, despisers of good, uh, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of um, God. And it's very interesting uh, to see that, you know, even Paul um, mentions those who are even religious, uh, you know, people in the in this group of uh, who he's talking about the uh, the kind of people who will be there during the last days. So he even clubs religious people with the rest of the kinds of people that he has mentioned. He says, you know, there'll be people who will have a form of godliness, but denying its uh, power. So he's basically saying that there's, that these people will be people who uh, will embrace all the nice things, all the good things uh, of the Christian faith, but they will deny the power. Okay? They will deny the power. So if you look at this Greek word power here, uh, the Greek word is dunamis. And uh, wherever we uh, read this word dunamis in the New Testament, this Greek word used dunamis for power in the New Testament, it talks about the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it basically refers to the manifestation of God's power through signs, miracles, uh, 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 the power required for salvation and uh, deliverance. So here the Greek word for power is dunamis, uh, which is basically referring to the power of the Holy Spirit or the manifestation uh, of the power of God, which is seen through manifestation means, uh, which is something that is, uh, which we can see, experience, a reality. Uh, you know, so manifestation of God's power through healings, miracles, uh, the manifestation of his power that is required uh, for salvation and for um, deliverance. So what Paul is saying here is that in the last days, there will be people who will have this form of uh, religion. They will be able to say all the right things, uh, even claim to believe all that we believe, uh, which is the truth in God's word. And they will also be doing the right things. But what they will deny is they will deny the power of the Holy Spirit, OK? So they will believe what we believe, they will say what we are saying, the truth from God's word. They will also be doing the right things, but, you know, they will deny the power of the Holy Spirit. And Paul is saying, you know, from such people, just stay away, turn away from them, uh, don't be with uh, them. So here we need to, you know, uh, uh, understand this truth that in the last days, you know, it's not just sufficient for us to have a form of godliness or to have a form of religion without having the power of the Holy Spirit. It's important for us, yes, to know the truth in God's word, to understand it, to believe it, uh, to live out that truth uh, in and through our lives, um, to have that form of religion, but also you know, uh, to, uh, uh, you know, also have the power of the Holy uh, Spirit. And we see that Jesus, he uh, just did not preach and teach about the kingdom of God, about the Father's love. Um, he just didn't show compassion and forgiveness and love for people. But he also attested, uh, you know, his preaching and teaching with signs, miracles, and wonders. That was done through the power of the Holy uh, Spirit. We also see this in the early church, the early apostles, the early disciples. You know, they went around preaching and teaching, and their preaching and teaching was attested with signs, miracles, and wonders. And 
the, one of the reasons why people even listened to them was because uh, of the great science, miracles, and wonders that we're doing. So they were manifesting the power of the Holy uh, Spirit. So if we have this form of religion and we don't have the power of the Holy Spirit, then it's not going to be of any uh, use because uh, in the time that we are living now, you know, we must actually pursue more of the dunamis or more of the power of the Holy Spirit uh, because of the times that we are uh, living in. So this is not the time to just embrace a form of religion that is uh, void of the power of the Holy Spirit, but it's a time when we must cry out for God that we want more of his dunamis power. We want more of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit in manifestation in operation, in demonstration, in and through our lives. Why is it important that we, you know, that we must cry out to God for more of his dunamis power, uh, uh, cry out for more of this power, for the power of the Holy Spirit to be manifested in our life, in operation, in demonstration, uh, in and through our lives is because, one reason is because, you know, given the times that we are living in, you know, we need desperately uh, uh, the power of God to work, uh, to be able to stand ourselves and to make a difference uh, in this world. So, you know, an empty, powerless form of religion uh, will have no impact uh, on, uh, you know, the, the, the darkness that is filling our world, the darkness that is prevailing uh, in the world, and also the darkness that is prevailing uh, in our world in these uh, last days. So uh, here it's an important thing that we uh, acknowledge, that we, um, you know, take hold of, that we just don't have a form of religion, uh, but we also are crying out. We are also pursuing uh, for more of that uh, power of the Holy Spirit to be manifested uh, in and through our lives. So crying out to God that, you know, God move us in mighty signs, uh, miracles and wonders because we're living in these days where uh, people don't want to uh, hear the truth, uh, leave alone receiving the truth. Uh, they are also having... Uh, truths just being bombarded by various cult groups, philosophies, various religions that are bringing out their truths in 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 different ways. Um, but you know, the truth of the gospel should be made known not just through uh, words, uh, but also through the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, through signs, miracles, wonders, healings, and uh, deliverance. So this is what is required. Uh, in our world today, even as we are living um, in these end days, uh, because an empty, powerless form of religion will not have any impact uh, on the darkness that prevails in this in our world today. Because you know, people are already uh, filled with darkness. Uh, the evil one has blinded their eyes, veiled their eyes. You know, is preventing them from receiving the truth, from knowing the truth from acknowledging the truth and hence we need the power of God even uh, you know as we are speaking the word that God's power will be manifested uh, through the gospel that we are preaching or teaching or that we are sharing with um, people okay so it's a it's a call for us to pursue this uh, uh, more uh, in in the in the times and the days that in the season that we are living uh, today verses six and seven can one of you please read verses six and seven please okay before we uh, look at verses six and seven um, um, uh, Avani says verse five says you know turn away from uh, such people uh, so yeah you know Paul has been basically saying have nothing to do with them you know don't associate uh, with them uh, he's just ended off uh, you know uh, chapter um, two where he's saying you know um, uh, he's saying you know be with those who are of the same calling same mind those who are pursuing righteousness love peace and he's also uh, you know at various uh, points in his letter he's 
we basically say have nothing to do with them you know uh, don't even uh, discuss with them don't even argue with them don't even talk with them uh, you know turn away from them so this is something that he's continuing he's saying have nothing to do with uh, such kind of men who have a form of religion uh, uh, you know, he's, he said, you know, don't have nothing to do with people who are false teachers, uh, you know, uh, 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 teaching false doctrines and uh, lies have nothing to do with them, but also have nothing to do with people who have a form of godliness, you know, who kind of believe everything that you're believing, doing everything right, but not you know, um, uh, 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 taking hold of the power of the Holy Spirit uh, have nothing to do with such people. Ma'am, uh, just to follow up on this, just mm -hmm. wanted to ask, when we say God, denying the power, so uh, power means the works of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So can we include like speaking in tongues, water baptism or, or flowing in the gifts uh, of the Spirit in the church, uh, not giving them the, uh, the preference importance that they need to give? So we see such a kind of uh, religion in many churches as well. So, uh, but we, uh, so not, uh, you know, turn away from such means, like, uh, should we not even uh, attend uh, such uh, church or I, I don't know, because they are teaching the word of God. But apart from that, there is no work of the spirit in the church. There is uh, no preference given to the work of the Holy Spirit. Um, so that's what I'm a bit confused about is. Um, so it, it, that, all this comes into it, ma'am. Yes, basically what uh, he is saying is, you know, what Paul is saying in the context that he's writing uh, uh, to Timothy is saying, you know, uh, don't, I mean, have nothing to do with such people means don't go along with them, don't uh, discuss with them, don't talk with them, uh, you know, just don't have anything to do with them. But he said in the preceding verses, you know, uh, do have nothing to do with them does not mean that you don't teach them. Right. Uh, look at what he says in verses 23 to verse 26, you know, but be patient, teach them. You know, but he's but he says in other places, don't uh, uh, talk with them, avoid their idle talk, bab babblings, uh, arguments, because it leads only to strife. So says those things you avoid. But he continuously tells him what he needs to focus on. He says, you know, teach them. And we he ended off. Um, you know, this section of this letter, which uh, we look at it as Second Timothy chapter 2, where he says, you know, patiently teach these people, be gentle with them, be loving with them, be humble with them. So here when he says, you know, have uh, nothing to do with them, you know, or just turn away from such people, it means, uh, you know, don't have don't listen to them uh, don't argue with them but yet you know you when they come to church you they just listen to the truth in god's word you teach them uh, and does not mean that you don't uh, you know minister to them or show them love no but in our context uh, what do we do yes there are some churches who uh, don't talk about the third person of the holy spirit and i was born and raised up uh, in, 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 in a church where they talk about the Holy Spirit, but not the works of the Holy Spirit. They don't give uh, 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 significance to the third person of the Trinity, to his uh, the person and work of the Holy Spirit, to the uh, teachings of the Holy Spirit, manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Um, also studied in a seminary where we were not taught about the Holy Spirit, the works of the Holy Spirit. So yes, in, in such uh, churches in uh, you know people are ignorant about the third person of the trinity they're ignorant about the work of the holy spirit uh, because of the doctrines that are there because of uh, uh, the fathers who had established uh, those uh, mainline churches uh, and all of those things so they're ignorant about the truth but there are many now who are coming from these mainline churches who are coming to uh, the so-called charismatic uh, churches or the more independent churches where we are not only just focusing on teaching and preaching the word of god but also uh, in uh, in the manifestations of the work of the holy spirit and so people are learning so people are being educated people are uh, receiving these truths and it's a slow process because for me as well uh, coming from this mainline church well we were never taught about 
the personal work of the Holy Spirit. We were uh, uh, never thought about, uh, you know, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, studying in a Bible college. So when I, uh, you know, uh, interacted with churches in the city where I studied uh, in my Bible college, and they were manifesting the gifts, and I thought they were, you know, demon possessed. I didn't want have to, anything to do with them i would run away every time they said they would they would say that they would pray for me i would run and hide myself literally hide myself you know i didn't want to do anything with uh, them because i was i didn't know about the work of the holy spirit i was ignorant but then when i when i actually joined apc that's when you know i learned about the work of the holy spirit the manifestations and uh, you know slowly just moved into uh, or I I into all of those things. And now, you know, uh, uh, I'm just able to flow in those things, able to teach, I'm able to identify, um, learning also as well, growing in the things of God. So I think we just have to give people the opportunity and the time to hear uh, uh, the word of God. And also that is why we're saying, you know, it's important at this time that we are also desiring for more of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit because people are in a time where they are living in fear, fear of sickness, fear of death. Uh, they want to see a move of God. They want to see the work of God. And all of this is actually uh, talking about his uh, nature, who he is, that he still flows in signs, miracles, and wonders. He still does uh, uh, miracles that we can uh, we can still speak uh, uh, in, in, in tongues, and it's a wonderful uh, prayer language. So even my cousins are, you know, they hear us speak in tongues, and they're also, you know, uh, they want to know, so we speak to them. Uh, when they come to, one of my cousins came to, uh, to APC one, and then she just prayed for the baptism of the Holy Spirit as pastor was praying. So, you know, it's a slow process. They still go back to the mainline church, but there's a slow process. And uh, I think God is working in people's life. He's moving. Uh, even in these mainline churches, he's moving. He's bringing about, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a knowledge of uh, how, who he is and what he does uh, as well. So people are just being enlightened. So what we need to do is, Paul said, you know, pray for such people and also, you know, begin uh, teaching them, uh, you know, even as you display uh, the works of the Spirit, they begin to uh, want that in their own lives. Now, for example, if you look at the church at Corinth, uh, Paul writes to them and says, hey, you are, you know, all of you are so eager, you're just moving so mightily in the gifts of the Spirit, you're so eager and desirous when you all come together, uh, you know, one has a word of prophecy, one has a word of uh, knowledge, one has a word of wisdom, uh, you want to interpret those tongues and, you know, there's so much of excitement. Uh, but then he says, even as they're mightily flowing in tongues, he says, but you're still infants. You know, I can't give you meat. You still have to be fed with uh, milk. Now, why is it that a church where he feels that, you know, hey, they're still, they're, they're just moving mightily in the manifestation, the power of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But as a church, they are so uh, childlike in their, in their understanding of the word. And I still have to give them milk instead of giving them the meat uh, from God's word why is it that you know uh, this was the scenario is because when paul went to the church uh, to corinth and he was uh, you know teaching and uh, uh, ministering he was also displaying the work of the holy spirit and these people in the church were so caught up with you know uh, how paul was just manifesting the gifts of the spirit the power of the holy spirit and they just wanted it they just so desired in it and they just were uh, you know just wanting to receive it and so they received that and they were flowing mightily in that but at the same time there was such an immature church in terms of their spiritual wisdom and maturity in understanding um, the word of god but so zealous uh, for um, uh, the, the 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 works of the Holy Spirit for the gifts of the Holy Spirit to move and they were just mightily flowing in, in in all of those things so he's trying to even bring order in that area because everybody was so chaotic everybody wants to say what they have received what you know how they want to uh, display their gifts uh, so yes on different levels but Paul what does he do he keeps you know uh, he keeps uh, uh, writing to them he keeps teaching them he does not give up on them he says hey you know uh, 
you know, I'm not going to teach you anymore, but continues teaching to them. He writes First Corinthians, Second Corinthians, continually ministers to, to that uh, to the group of people. So yes, we need to pray, continue to minister, continue to teach them, enlighten them, and things like that. Did that help, uh, Sister Avini? Yes, ma'am. Sure. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, the PSS says, if a person's life is transformed by the hearing of the gospel, even that is the work of the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes, it is the work of the Holy Spirit. It's not, uh, uh, it's not how well we have communicated the gospel. Though. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. That is why it says we need the power of God, not only for healing and uh, deliverance and for, uh, uh, for signs and wonders, but also for salvation because salvation is just the work of the Holy Spirit. It's the work of God. It's not uh, our work. So uh, Divya says, not that healing, miracles, signs, and wonders are not important. However, there is the right balance between teaching the word of God and moving according to the Holy Spirit. Um, yes, yes, that is important uh, because uh, Jesus, um, you know, uh, uh, not only just moved in signs, miracles, and wonders, he also taught uh, the, uh, and he preached the word of God. So. Uh, yes, it was his preaching and teaching, and also through signs, miracles, and wonders. Uh, it he didn't uh, give importance to one over the other. Both of them. We also see in the early church that's the same thing that happened. Peter is uh, preaching and teaching, and it's followed by signs, miracles, and wonders. So it then the preaching and teaching is attested with signs, miracles, and wonders. So it's preaching and teaching, which is attested means that preaching and teaching uh, goes alongside with the science, science and miracles uh, and wonders. So we see that, you know, wherever they, um, uh, even if you look at uh, uh, Acts chapter 8, where, you know, uh, Philip goes to uh, Samaria, you know, we read in Acts chapter 8 where uh, it says that, uh, uh, then Philip was five. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitudes, with one accord, heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which we did. So it's both hearing and uh, seeing. Uh, but you know, if you look at scriptures, more uh, you know, hearing first and then attested with uh, signs, uh, miracles, and. Wonder. So even when um, when uh, Peter went to the the house of Cornelius, uh, I think Acts chapter ten, uh, he's preaching the word, and then you know uh, he doesn't even pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit because he thinks that they are Gentiles and he can't pray for them. But it's so to the work of the Holy Spirit, they're already convicted in their hearts, which means they've already received salvation and they are already baptized uh, in the Holy uh, uh, Spirit. And uh, so yes, so it's it's hearing and seeing hearing and seeing so uh, both are important it's not just seeing uh, but it's also uh, hearing because people can see and then attest it to uh, even um, like we're going to be looking uh, even satan can do uh, uh, miracles even satan can prophesy about your future tell you about your future so it's important to hear and see okay did that help um, Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we'll move on. Uh, verses six and seven. Can somebody read verses six and seven, please? Can you read this? Yes, Asha, go ahead. Verse six and seven. Can you hear me, Pastor? Yes. For among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women, burdened with sins and led astray by various passions, always learning and never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth. Amen. Thank you. So he says, for this sort is he's talking about the men uh, who he has, uh, you know, spoken about, listed in verses one to uh, five, and especially referring to this religious bunch. Who have a form of godliness, form of religion, but uh, you know denying the power. He says these uh, men sneak into homes uh, where they take uh, captive these gullible women. Uh, why not you know gullible men? Because men are uh, 
you know, usually are the breadwinner. They are off working hard. So these women who are at home, uh, housewives, taking care of the children and have all the time to listen to all of these kind of teachings and doctrines. And so he says, you know, they go and take captive of these gullible women, which means these naive and innocent women, uh, you know, uh, innocent in the sense, you know, then naive and innocent, they just believe whatever anyone uh, says without, you know, thinking for themselves. Uh, and he says these women who are already themselves uh, in sin, uh, but you know, these kind of people, they don't want to listen to the truth. Uh, they like learning, uh, you know, but they don't want to come to the truth. They want to listen, but they don't want to come to the truth. They like information, uh, but they don't like transformation. So they are people who say, uh, you know, uh, uh, hey, you know, you tell me what you want, but don't ask me to change. Don't ask me to embrace the word. Don't ask me to uh, change. So these kind of women, these kind of men who have this form of godliness, you know, are these kind of men who uh, they like learning. They want to come to the truth, but they don't want, uh, you know, to be transformed. They don't want anyone to asking them to change. They don't want to embrace the truth in God's word. Um, and they say, don't ask God, uh, uh, don't ask God to change uh, me. So he's saying, you know, these kind, uh, such men will go to the homes of such women and mess up their families and mess up their uh, homes. And then he talks about um, uh, two men in verse eight. He says, now as Janus and Jambres resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the faith but they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifest to all, as theirs also was. So Paul is continuing to talk about these kind of men, the same kind of men that he has been talking about in verses 5 to 7. And now Paul compares these men to uh, Janus and Jambres, uh, who resisted Moses, um, basically, uh, in we read about uh, this account in uh, Exodus chapter 7, verses 7 to uh, 13, where, um, you know, Moses is 80 years old, Aaron is 83, and um, uh, God tells uh, Moses and Aaron to go to Pharaoh, and to speak to him and, you know, to do the signs and miracles that he has asked them to do. Uh, so when, uh, you know, they don't listen and uh, Moses puts his uh, staff down, it becomes a serpent. But, you know, um, Pharaoh is not taken aback. He's not like, oh, wow, you did this miracle. That means your God is powerful and all of those things. He doesn't say any of those things. He just laughs in a very mocking way. And then uh, he just maybe claps or calls his uh, his uh, his uh, magicians and they also you know through their sorcery their witchcraft you know they also do the same thing that uh, Moses did they throw down the staff and it becomes um, uh, uh, the serpent but um, Moses uh, you know uh, He's been looking and he must be thinking like, hey, what's happening here? But then, uh, you know, uh, his uh, uh, serpent swallows up, uh, Aaron's rod sw swallows up all the other rods. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, yes, God shows that he is more powerful uh, than, than these men who have also done the same thing. Uh, through their uh, witchcraft and through their um, uh, sorcery. So um, uh, the, the Old Testament uh, account of this, uh, uh, or the Old Testament narrative in Exodus chapter 7, verses 7 to, 7 to 13, does not mention the names of Janus and uh, Jambres. So how does Paul uh, obtain these names? Maybe, uh, you know, uh, because he was uh, well educated in the Old Testament, the Torah, the law, Old Testament uh, literature, Jewish literature as well. Likely have got these names from there, uh, but it could also have been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. So either way, whether he studied it or learned it through the Jewish literature that he had read or studied, uh, it would have been brought back to memory um, or he would be have he would have been led by the Holy Spirit to uh, write the names of uh, uh, these two people who were part of uh, uh, Pharaoh's group of wise men and sorcerers and magicians. Okay, 
but we see that um, that you know these these men, even though they confronted or opposed Moses, um, you know. Um, with their uh, enchantment, sorcery, um, with their contact with the unseen uh, dark forces, uh, you know, uh, we know that you know uh, God did have an upper hand. He he proved himself more powerful uh, than the rods or the serpents of these um, uh, these men. So um, you know, he says that in these these men in the last days uh, will. Opposed the truth just like these magicians of uh, Egypt opposed uh, Moses, you know, but their whole inspiration or their whole source of doing all of these, uh, uh, you know, uh, signs and miracles or even, you know, prophesying about the future, saying things that are happening in the present uh, in their lives is not from God, but it's the work of the demon. It's it's from the devil. It's demonic. Uh, so this kind of opposition will come against the church. And uh, Paul um, uh, has mentioned this uh, in First Timothy chapter 4. Uh, where he says, you know, uh, in the last days, this kind uh, of um, teachings will come up and it'll be so, it'll be uh, driven by uh, uh, demons, uh, it'll be seduced by evil spirits, by demonic spirits. Um, so even uh, in the last days that we are living in, you know, this kind of opposition will come up against the church. Um, where, uh, you know, demonic spirits, um, uh, where uh, uh, demons will manifest their power. Um, but what did God do when he instructed uh, Moses? How did Moses uh, respond to what God asked him to do? Or how did God instruct Moses uh, to respond? He did not say, hey, okay, you know, uh, these men are also able to do uh, the miracles that I've been doing. So let's change our strategy. We see that God does not change his strategy. Uh, the first three miracles that Moses did by the power of God, which is, uh, you know, the rod becoming a snake, uh, water turning into blood, uh, frogs coming out of the water, these sorcerers through their divine magic enchantments, uh, demonic uh, power, were also able to do uh, the same. But we see that God does not strain, change his strategy. He does not tell uh, Moses, hey, Moses, uh, this is not working for us. Let's try something else. Uh, but, you know, there is no uh, debate or argument about this. He just, God keeps just pronouncing one plague after the other plague. And the fourth uh, plague, when God sends it, you know, with something supernatural, he does the fourth plague. Uh, you know, um, the, the magicians try, but they're not able to do. And uh, what do they tell Pharaoh? Exodus chapter 8, verses 18 and 19. Uh, they tell Pharaoh that this is nothing but the hand of God, the finger of God, the power of God. And we see that the rest of the miracles, the rest of the um, uh, seven miracles, they were not able to do it with uh, their own uh, enchantments or their own um, uh, witchcraft or sorcery or the power of the evil one. So what is the lesson uh, that we can learn for uh, the, uh, the New Testament church uh, in these last days. Uh, if you and I are going to stand firm, uh, if we are going to make a difference in the world in which we live, you know, then you and I are going to stand up against men who will rise up in these last days or in this, you know, the, this, this last season, uh, uh, you know, with their own uh, powers, with their own signs, miracles and wonders. Uh, but we need to press in for more and more of the power of the Holy Spirit, for more and more of the uh, message of the Holy Spirit in and through our lives. And so that is the call of uh, what we need to be pursuing in these last days or in this uh, last uh, time. Um, before the coming of the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. So it's not time for us to give up and turn back, um, uh, but it's time where we tell God we want more of his dunamis power, we want more of the Holy Spirit uh, power to be manifested in our lives. And that is the 
uh, one way that you know we can uh, stand up against what is coming against the churches in these uh, last days. And so here, you know, this is what Paul states about these men in the last days. And in addition to them having a form of godliness without power, and these men who sneak into people's home um, and by uh, you know proper comparison with uh, the sorcerers in Egypt, he's saying that they are actually men who are involved in a spiritualism uh, that is occult, that is they are receiving the power from, uh, from Satan. It's a demonic power and it is not the power from uh, God. But he says that you know, they will progress no further uh, there will be a limit where you know they will their their magic, their witchcraft, their sorcery, their enchantments will come uh, to an end. There will be they will hit a limit uh, where you know what they what they can do uh, uh, or what they are able to do to the empowerment of the demonic forces will come to an end. There will just be a basic limit that they can reach, and uh, when they reach that limit, you know their foolishness. Uh, will be manifested. It will be opposed by the power of God, uh, by the truth in God's word and the manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit because the power of God is much more superior and more powerful uh, than these men uh, who oppose the truth. So Paul goes on to say uh, that such men, you know, are men who resist the truth, which means they oppose the truth, they fight against the truth, they are men of corrupt minds, which means that they are evil in their minds, have evil intentions, they're sick in their minds, they're so warped in their thinking, so twisted in their thinking. Uh, also, uh, you know, disapproved concerning their faith, which means their faith is not real. It's false faith, worthless faith, and counterfeit faith. And they will also progress no further, which means they won't get too far with what they do and their foolishness will be um, exposed. So that is why Paul is saying, turn away from such men. Because what they're doing is they're doing it through demonic power, uh, through, the, uh, through the power of the evil one. Uh, so we can identify who are those who are, you know, having this form of godliness, but denying the power, which means they're trying to pursue the power by demonic works to demonic means uh, and who are people who are ignorant of this whole fact of the dunamis power or the holy spirit power and the manifestation of such power and he says such people you teach be nice you uh, you know you you teach them in love you teach them in um, uh, uh, in, in in humility and all patience because um, uh, what paul talks about these kind of uh, people is they they want to they listen to the truth, but they say, don't change me. So you know these kind of men. And that is why Paul says, God knows those who are his. Okay, He clearly knows who uh, will stand up for him, who are his, who will uh, fall in alignment to who he is, and those who are not. And you know, we also need that discernment. So one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is, uh, you know, is um, uh, discerning the spirits. Okay, so he will give us that discerning of the spirit to discern what kind of people they are and to the extent we need to go uh, in teaching them and being with them or helping uh, them out. So that is again where we need uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit in, uh, in operation. Okay, so just like to look at two important comments here. The first thing is uh, we must press in for more of the supernatural power or the work of the Holy Spirit the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, um, even as we're living in the end times, the end days, and not go back from it, uh, you know, um, uh, the, irrespective of what will happen uh, in the last uh, uh, days. So uh, we need to just pursue, uh, you know, uh, uh, manifesting the power of the Holy Spirit and the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit to be uh, operative in our lives that we can uh, manifest his presence and his power in a powerful uh, way um you know first timothy chapter four verses one to three uh, uh, you know uh, paul says that um, uh, 
that in the last days uh, Jesus foretold, you know, uh, uh, he, he's mentioned about all of these things. Uh, uh, even in the last days, there will be increased measure of false and counterfeit uh, teachers and workers of uh, Satan. Okay, those who are doing powerful uh, science miracles to the work of Satan, but they will have a limit. They will just hit a, um, a limit. So if anything, the church um, uh, of uh, Jesus Christ has to press in or to ask more of is that of the power of the Holy Spirit to be manifested and demonstrated in and through our lives. The second thing is that we must stand firm in our faith, you know, demonstrating in greater measure God's power uh, till the foolishness and the worthlessness of those who oppose the truth are uh, ex uh, exposed. So yes, Satan will come, uh, you know, Satan will bring about and do many counterfeit signs, miracles and wonders, um, uh, which will be kind of similar to some of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, but his power has a limit, uh, just like we see at what happened in, in Egypt when, uh, when, Moses was con when, when Moses confronted Pharaoh. Uh, but, you know, we as a church, as believers, we need to come to this place where we are demonstrating the greater power and when we demonstrate the greater power, we are actually demonstrating the greater glory of our uh, God. So when we're demonstrating the power of God, the manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit, we are actually manifesting the glory of God. We're manifesting who God is and what he does. Okay. So as uh, believers, you know, uh, we're all so concerned. He has. Is, are, the, are we living the last days? The signs we see. Is this the last days? Are we in that season, uh, or we are just going towards that season, or we are already in that season? You know, all of these questions cloud our mind. Uh, but yes, we need to know. It is uh, the season. This is the times. Um, you know, but whatever it is, uh, whether we know for fact or not, we are confused. What we need to do as a church is to pursue this, to ask God for greater, uh, uh, you know, anointing of his power, the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit uh, to be manifested in and through our lives uh, so that his glory can be revealed in a greater magnitude so that many people come to the saving grace of uh, Jesus Christ. Now, we see that Jesus, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, always manifested the fullness of the power of the Holy Spirit. He went in the full anointing, uh, manifest the full uh, power of the Holy Spirit. Why was it so that, you know, that short time, that three uh, years that he had, he could just manifest the glory of God in a greater uh, measure, in a greater extent. So even as time is short, um, we don't have, uh, some of us, you know, in some of the countries that we have, we don't even have the opportunity. Uh, we're kind of restrained from doing things. Um, so it's it's a, um, more than ever, uh, you know, season or time where we are just pursuing uh, and saying, God, I just want to demonstrate your glory in a greater way, be manifested in and through uh, me. But before we do that, we need to, you know, uh, come to that place where saying, God, even as I want to be that vessel of honor where I'm manifesting your glory, I want to take that step to do these four things uh, which you require of me so that you can use me mightily and I can display your glory. I can represent who you are and represent uh, your uh, your nature and your um, your power in a, in, a, in a greater measure so that people would come to your saving grace and knowledge okay any questions versus one to nine okay there are no questions and we will look at verses 10 and 11 please can one of you please read verses 10 and 11 you however have followed my teaching my conduct my aim in life my faith my patience my love my steadfastness, my persecutions and sufferings that happened to me at Antioch, at Icumu and at Lystra, which persecutions I endured, yet from all the Lord rescued me. Amen. Thank you. So here he says, you know, but you, uh, 
uh, he begins this part of his letter says, but you have carefully followed my doctrine. So Paul has just described the kind of people that will threaten uh, uh, the earth in the last days and which Timothy must con contend with in his own day. And he says, but you, which means, you know, he's saying that, you know, um, uh, yeah, but you have been shown, uh, you know, uh, clearly uh, the dividing line, uh, you know, what is important, what is not important, uh, you know, uh, those who are of God, those who are not of God, those who are ruled uh, by the Spirit of God, those who are giving into the things of the flesh, you know, so even as you have, uh, uh, you know, uh, been um, edified with this truth or know this truth, you know, he says, uh, be careful, you know, but you have carefully, he says, but you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life. So Paul is basically saying that, Timothy, you have had this privilege, you know, of working closely with me. Um, uh, Paul, uh, Timothy has worked closely with the Apostle Paul for the last 18 years. You know, Paul has treated him as a son in the faith. Um, uh, Paul has, you know, his life has been so transparent, so open, that all of his co-workers, those who are sons in the faith, those he's mentoring, have seen his, uh, watched his life, his teaching, his doctrine, um, uh, seen his persecution, the way that he has uh, struggled through his imprisonments, and how he has persevered in 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 the in the times of hardships, how he's endured a uh, persecution. So he's saying that you know you've carefully uh, observed me, you've carefully seen everything, uh, you've had an opportunity to even uh, learn from me, learn the right teachings, the doctrines. Um, We've also seen uh, the purpose why I live my life. We've also seen the purpose of uh, my faith, my love for God and uh, and people. So he says, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, having seen everything, you know, you just be strong in the uh, in the faith. You know, just hold on. Don't um, don't give in. Don't uh, be overwhelmed with all the challenges, but stay strong because you know. Uh, uh, you have seen my life, you've seen how I've endured through persecution and difficulty. So, you know, this is a good example uh, for us to how we can mentor people, how we can raise up children in the faith uh, to be men and women of, um, you know, uh, who are strong in their faith, who have a standing for God. Uh, this is how we raise up our Timothys. Uh, so when we raise up um, you know, or mentor people, we treat them as sons and daughters and not as uh, servants. Um, if you treat people as sons and daughters, then you will raise up sons and daughters in the faith. You will raise up sons and daughters who belong to the church, who take hold of that truth uh, that has been entrusted to them, the doctrines, the teachings, the manner uh, of the way of life, living a holy life, living a righteous life in, um, uh, in God's sight, because you will raise up sons and daughters. But if you treat people as servants, uh, then you will raise up um, um, as servants. You know, uh, we know when we discipline servants, what, what do they do? They get angry with us and then they will move to the next house or they'll go to some other house. They'll say, I'm not coming from uh, tomorrow onwards. But if you discipline uh, uh, a son or a daughter, they know that, you know, uh, my parent was being too harsh or hard with me, disciplining me. But you know what they did was right. Ultimately, they will know what you did, what uh, the way you disciplined them. The reason why you disciplined them was because they were in the wrong and they they want to help you. So you know, sons and daughters will not leave and go to the next house or the neighbor's house or live in somebody else's house. They will remain at home because that is their home, that is their house, that is where they uh, belong. Now, when servants, you raise up servants. Uh, in the house of God, you know, they will work for a reward, they will work for a good name, they will work for position titles. And when you don't um, uh, give them that, uh, you know, the right, uh, the increment or the, the, the uh, uh, you don't, um, uh, you know, you don't give them that position or, you know, give them the names and titles, uh, what do they do? They just, they will just leave. 
uh, they will be upset, they will be angry, they will leave, they will go to another church. Uh, because why do they do that? Because they don't have the sense of belonging. They are not saying that, hey, this is my house, irrespective of whether I'm acknowledged, irrespective of whether I get the name, the fame, the title, uh, and how I'm addressed to, or whether I'm acknowledged for what I have done. Uh, you know, it doesn't really matter because this is my house, this is where God has planted me, this is where uh, I have um, received my spiritual inheritance, my upbringing, so I need to be faithful here, they continue to be faithful if they're sons and daughters and not if they are um, servants. So servants work for a reward, uh, sons and daughters work because they belong there, it's their house, they just do it irrespective of the reward. Servants receive a reward, but sons and daughters receive and hint inheritance and they would not want to leave that inheritance for a simple uh, a reward. So in the house of God, that's the church of God, we need to raise up Timothys, which means we need to raise up sons and daughters. Um, so you can either raise up sons and daughters or you can raise up uh, servants. Sadly, many pastors raise up uh, servants, which means that they keep people under their uh, their fists, you know, tell them what to do, what they shouldn't be doing, don't empower them, don't, uh, you know, build them up in the faith, don't give them opportunities to use, exercise the gifts or their talents because they are um, feeling very uh, threatened by their own position that people will recognize them, will not recognize me, they will go ahead of me. Uh, so, you know, uh, they kind of give keep them as a servant mentality and that we feel would bring a downfall in that church because there would be no sons and daughters who will rise up after this man to take over their inheritance, to take over their responsibility because they have not felt that sense of belonging, that there's that home, that they belong there and uh, th that they have uh, their responsibility and job there. So as pastors, as ministers, as children's church ministers, as youth ministers, we need to raise up sons and daughters and not as servants, not uh, keep them under us, but you know, get them to grow in the things of God, even as if they outdo us, out to us, you know, we need to just rejoice that we have raised up a son or daughter who is mighty in the Lord, who is doing the work of the Lord and flowing mightily uh, in the works of the Lord. Amen. Okay, thank you so much. We'll end class now. Anyone has any questions? Any questions? So we learned some important truths uh, in today's lesson. Uh, please go back listen to the lecture or you know listen to uh, read the notes just uh, you know read through the scripture and uh, you know just do what uh, we have been learning so that becomes so much part of your life and what we are studying okay thank you everyone we'll stop here and um, uh, have a good um, day and a good week ahead i'll see you next monday thank you ma'am thank you